87% of realtors that get into the business get out of the business after two years. That does not exist in our world. We have massive visions around growing our businesses, and we are always looking to add talent to our world. We do everything in our power to ensure the people we surround ourselves with defy the odds, get into production, and build massive lives for themselves. We have interviewed some of the top realtors in the world. If you're a new realtor, a top producer, or CEO of a mega team, Sales Beast Podcast is your blueprint for success. With locations all across Canada, reach out to us to talk about partnership and opportunities. We are looking forward to it. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well, thanks. Thanks for joining us. Uh, no no Anna today. She had something that came up, but um, you're probably wondering who the hell I am. I, I met you before. Um, <laughs> I met you through, you know, Alex Berman? Yeah, yeah, I, I met you uh, at a. I met you at the uh, Glover, Glover thing. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, and, and yeah. hard to believe that's almost a year ago because mm -hmm. uh, I'm going back to Arizona in, in January for the same event. Live on real nice. Yeah, yeah. So I'm uh, I'm in Portugal for that one, but I'm going to go to the one in Fort Lauderdale again. Yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. I can't awesome. wait for it. Just started coaching uh, with Kathy actually. Oh, did um, you? Yeah, oh, love it cool. so far. Yeah, she's awesome. awesome. Yeah. Is this my AI in here or yours? That's mine. Okay, I just see two in there. You can kick mine out. I don't need it. So totally up oh, to okay. you. I don't even know. Oh. Yeah, I just I just oh. see two in there. So I was yeah. curious. I don't I couldn't <laughs> even tell you what those things are for, to be honest with you. Uh, I love them for my job because uh, that's what I do. I coach for a living. So yeah. the AI, the AI is, uh, we've been using virtual partners for recaps and and note taking and things like that. Okay. AI, AI is Amazing. Just better. <laughs> yeah, it's better, faster. Get the whole recording if you want. You can get a transcript. Like it's it's Amazing. legit. Yeah. yeah, I use the extent of my use of it really is uh, ChatGPT, yeah. but I I was resistant to that for quite some time. Got on it. And I'm, I'm a full blown addict. I don't yeah. I don't Google any chat chat. No ChatGPT. That uh, Facebook posts, responses to people, yeah. like emails, like you can, you can really, uh, you can really jazz up your your normal vernacular. <laughs> yeah, no, it's incredible. <laughs> yeah. So, well, I'm excited to have you on. I've heard quite a bit about <laughs> you through through Alex, and then um, we uh, we had Adam on actually maybe two months ago. Uh, oh, okay, we cool. There, so I learned about your business. There was actually a point in time where we were thinking about joining movie in. Maybe yeah. it's something for the future. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Well, we're here. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> so we'll, uh, yeah, we'll get into it. Um, yeah, so what, what are, what is the format? Like, what are we talking about here? Cause it was pretty organic. It looked like we were just going to organically have a conversation. So it is pretty organic. I'll explain okay. to you how this podcast came to be. Um, we hosted a, an event in Toronto called the real estate growth summit. Um, it's through KWIP had, I don't know, eight, 900 people show up to that event. It was a two day, three day conference. Mm -hmm. Unlike you guys in the States that put on amazing events, Canadian stuff aren't really as good at that as you guys are. Um, Heard that. So it popped nicely. And then we left that event. Being our, that was fantastic. We met amazing people and learned amazing things from those people. And it ended. So how, how do we get in a room with, with more Jeff Glover, Adam Hergen, Roth, yeah. there's the, Norm Elliott's of the world, um, selfishly continue to grow ourselves. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm with it. Yeah. That's, I mean, honestly, that is, uh, that's probably the biggest driver for me, uh, coaching other other teams. You know, is yeah. uh, I, I say it probably on a weekly basis, and I don't think that my clients probably believe me, but most coaching calls, I learn just as much as as they do, or maybe maybe more, uh, yeah. just because. As a coach, it's our job to really dig in and ask questions. And if you can get good at asking questions, man, you can figure you can pretty much figure anything out. Like mm -hmm. I kind of since we're on a podcast, I mean, let's look at a guy like Joe Rogan, like the comedian, like nobody thought Joe Rogan was a, a brilliant guy in his youth, right? And then yeah. he just fig he just figured out how to connect with people, ask really good questions and keep an open mind and now look at him. I mean, he's Arguably mm -hmm. one of, if not the most influential person in the world at this time. Like, who else yeah. has a bigger audience? Hundred <laughs> percent. We may as well just let's roll into it. Pretend that was yeah, the yeah. first part of the podcast. Let me, let me know, bro. I absolutely <laughs> love that. 
I, I took, um, I don't know if you've ever taken that course, Redshirt, uh, yeah. through your KW Maps. Mm-hmm. And that's where I was first exposed to the concept of asking questions. I knew it as a listing agent. I knew if I was the one doing all the talking on the appointment, I lost. And they probably wouldn't like me very much. But Redshirt really exposed well, me to it, that. Well, it forces you, right? Like mm-hmm. it's, it's, it, it's building in those guardrails, keeping you out of telling and more into asking. So yeah. So I'll, I'll ask you a question. Who Who is Norm Elliott? I, like I said, I met you at uh, Awesome Glover Lead Up Conference. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, uh, and that's a that's a multifaceted answer. But uh, you, first and foremost, have the answer I, I have it from. <laughs> <laughs> I probably know more about you than you know. Well, first and foremost, uh, you know, husband, father, uh, family man, business owner. Um, avid paintball player, believe that or not, uh, you know, just, uh, but, but ultimately just a huge entrepreneurial spirit. I, yeah. I think that would, that would describe me pretty well. Okay. Now I'll, I'll really pump you up. So Norm is oh, okay. Living, Go for it. Living group <laughs> owned and operated by Adam Hergen author. I believe you guys are partnered with Gary Keller. Um, yes. It's probably the smartest real estate team in the world um tied with ben finney and chris Suarez. we've had them on the podcast i don't want to them but <laughs> yeah, in fine. my mind you two those two groups are, are the who's who listen that, um, there's there's, there's definitely there's definitely room for for gary keller and, and ben kenny and chris and and adam on my mount rushmore so i'll i'll, I'll go with it i appreciate yeah. it <laughs> so the question i i ask myself why would gary keller and Adam want to be in business with you. Um, and there's a very good reason for that. <laughs> what I was told was you got a business in 2010. Within 10 years, you built a, a business that consistently did 500 transactions a year per age of productivity of four units. That was our minimum. Per- that, uh, that was our minimum standard. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll uh, if it's okay, I'll dive in a yeah. little deep and give you a little history. Sure. So, um, you know, out of college, uh, didn't really know what I was going to do. Um, the economy was was okay at that point in time, uh, but my father had owned a house painting business. All, like that's what I grew up in. I literally have been painting uh, exterior homes, exteriors of homes in in Florida since I was like thirteen. Yeah. And so I just remember uh, going to college and saying, "I'm never, ever, ever going to do that again." Like, like that was my motivation. Is like I'm not a blue collar guy, right? Like I, I did my blue collar time as a kid. I don't want to do it as an adult. And lo and behold, I graduate, uh, finished college and I have no idea what to do. So what do I do? I uh, reopen my retired father's business just because I didn't know what else to do. I knew how that worked. I knew I could make money. Uh, but most importantly, I really thought I could improve what he had done. And so I started in, in, uh, in contracting painting, you know, we started painting houses on the weekends and then I formulated a business plan, um, and, and changed the direction of the business from residential to commercial. And that was the biggest step for me because in my mind, it was like, do I want to go look for a job every three days or do I want to go look for a job every three months? And so I would take on the larger jobs, uh, so that I just had job security. And then what I found out is I'm like, oh, these contractors don't really want, they don't really care other than can you do the job on time for the money that you said you could do it for and keep our schedule. And so I figured that out and I started getting in networking really well with the, not just the contractors, but the owners. And so I kind of built a a little network of of new hotel um, builders, owners group, because they're all connected. And so that's kind of, I did that for like five years. And so for five years, I just, I built a company up to, you know, 40 blue collar workers, a few office staff. And we were, we were literally painting new construction hotels across the Southeastern United States. And I realized I'm like, oh, well, that's cool, but that's not enough. And so then I started going into the owner's group and the contractors and saying, I need more. And so I went and got my GC license and just started taking all the trades and then subbing out and finding my own help and, and again, it was all about schedule and price. So as long as I could fit into those parameters and I had a great relationship, um, I figured it out. And uh, and that was going great. And I probably would have never stopped doing that until 
the economy took a little bit of a halt in 2008, 9, and 10. And so that was the moment where I had to learn how to lay people off and how to, how to figure out an exit strategy really fast because my overhead was really large and I had no jobs on the horizon. So uh, I, started, uh, I started scaling that business back, um, finding, finding uh, employment for my people because I cared about them. And I slowly, slowly, slowly just closed that business um, in probably early 2010. And uh, that's when I met my, my wife, Mandy, who had very, uh, very vast experience in real estate. Uh, she wasn't doing real estate at the time. She was recently divorced, uh, mother of four. So commission-based income was a little scary for her. So she was working for Verizon Corporate, uh, you know, selling business cell phones. And that's how I met her because she was she was selling phones and I had a business. So I, that's how I came across her. And and we, we connected and started dating and we just decided, um, she's like, I know how to sell real estate and you don't really look like you're doing anything because I really wasn't. I was just trying to figure out the, the next play. And so we, we did, we, uh, we sent our kids to my parents' house. We went to the one week real estate course, crash course, did it in a week, tested the next Tuesday. She passed. I didn't, uh, had to go retest again. And, and I'll, I'll give you a little story around that is, uh, if you're studying for the real estate test, please study. Don't think you're just going to know it all. Cause that's what I did. I passed the course test and I was like, oh, this is easy. No big deal. Yeah, it was a big deal. So anyway. Uh, so then we started the started the business in Central Florida. Uh, we lived in Sebring, Florida. It's a small, very rural area in Central Florida, and we started a real estate team with no idea how to do that. And uh, started at an independent brokerage, a mom and pop shop. And thank thank God, my wife knew how to actually like sell real estate because the training we received was nothing. It was here's your desk, here's a phone, have at it. And so I literally spent the next probably 60 days at a desk, staring at my wife, make phone calls every day and trying to understand what she was doing and why she was doing it. And I came to the realization, I'm like, she's really only having like five conversations over and over and over again. And I was like, well, if that's it, I can figure that out. And so I started getting into business and, you know, as, as any, uh, as any team starts the, it always seems to work out the the more experienced person is the is the listing agent and the least experienced is the buyer's agent so that was me so i was i was hustling buyers for a couple of years um but but it actually suited my skill set really well because what i learned in contracting and what i learned in other businesses was didn't really matter what i knew about painting or building a hotel it mattered is how i connected with the people and figured out what problems they had to solve and found a solution and so that just kind of became, and, and, I, and, and I didn't even know it at that point, right? Like, I don't want to sound all philosophical like I knew what the hell I was doing because I did. Like, I just realized in hindsight, that's what I was doing is I was just connecting with people and identifying problems. Mm-hmm. And so that kind of that kind of led us uh, down a path of small wins, success, but n- nothing grand. But in our eyes, literally no jobs, quit. She quit her job. We had, oh, like uh, forgot a, a, a small portion of that. Uh, we had five children at home. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we, we had to figure it out. And, uh, and because construction, I had a, I had a, a healthy savings account uh, for a single guy or, or a single dad, but I didn't, I didn't have, uh, I didn't have that savings account healthy enough for a, you know, a large family to, to survive a long time. Uh, so kind of seems to be a recurring theme in my world is when the back's against the wall, we figure it out. And that's kind of where we were. I, I had enough money in the account. I, I figured that we could scrape by for six months if we had to. Um, and, and fortunately for us, 45 days later, we had our first closing. So yeah. that was the, that was the, the beginning. And then we operated a husband and wife team for, for a few years, um, did everything that everybody does wrong, you know, tried to hire buyers agents first. And then we figured out, Oh, we need admin support. And, and uh, my wife might be the highest driver uh, I've ever been around. So hiring uh, admin staff was not fun. Uh, we, we, we probably went through six or eight assistants the first year we were trying to hire. Um, and, then, and then I figured out the, uh, I figured out that we should have a system around hiring people. Like 
like we should probably not just hire people because they show up and we like them for the day. Because mm-hmm. what I realized is everybody's best day is interview day. Yeah. <laughs> so, so not to bore you, but yeah, we, uh, we grew the team a little bit, um, left the independent brokerage, uh, jumped over to uh, Remax. Remax was the number one uh, real estate team, uh, company in our market. Uh, and I believe at the time they were the number one real estate company in the world. And uh, I liked their comp model. Uh, coming from an independent mom and pop brokerage, uh, going to a you know, Remax model where you get a lot of your own commission, uh, it, it made sense for us financially. And we, we lived there for five years. And uh, uh, I think in our first 18 months in the business, we ended up leading our market uh, as a team <clears throat> and kind of never looked back. So it wasn't until that five years at Remax that we had started dabbling in adding additional agents. We found some admin support that, that you know, we found the right hire. Let me rephrase that. It wasn't their fault. It was ours. Uh, previous to that. Uh, so we found the right hire, started adding some people. And the Remax model actually is how I ended up at KW because Remax was not super conducive to building teams at the time. At the time, uh, and neither was my my broker owner at that Remax office. And so it just didn't make sense for me to continue to grow a team in the current comp model. Uh, so that's when we started branching out and looking for offices that that might help us a little better. Uh, and there was no Keller Williams Market Center in our market. Uh, actually, the, the closest one was a couple hours away. Um, so uh, I had one call with a team leader out of, a, out of a market center, Keller Williams, a couple hours away. Admittedly, I I was not impressive in the phone call, and he probably thought I was just you know just some some guy trying to figure some stuff out, and that never really materialized. And then uh, about a year later, we reconnected and. Uh, and that's when I kind of journeyed into the Keller Williams world. And you mentioned Ben Kenny earlier. Well, Ben Kenny was, was the first, the first influential person that I ever ran across in KW. Uh, like it's a crazy story. I was at a, an event in line for coffee, uh, standing next to him. I didn't know who he was at the time. Uh, he bought my coffee and sat down on a, on a bench and talked to me for about 40 minutes. And then I realized who he was like, you know, a day later and I went, Oh my God, what, what I'm an idiot. Like that's, that's crazy. Um, you but use then I just, that to, Cause now you're that guy. Do you, <laughs> do you take that experience? And for sure. It? For, for sure. Like, like I, uh, and, I met you through Alex. Firmly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I know Alex through I know him. We go to Tony Robbins events in West Palm yeah. um, a couple times a year. And Alex somehow knows Sandy McKay. He's my business partner, knows his best yep. friend out there. And that brought us to you. Yeah. But there, oh. I, I haven't been doing this that long, six years. And there are people like you or Glover has come to do our business plan in a couple of years. They're my like superheroes like you yeah. impact people massive well, that, and, 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 for you that and so and, and what i learned from ben was is no matter how big or grand or 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 financially successful he's always he's always seems to keep that that human touch that that willing to listen willing to help and willing to care about other people and and if anything else, I learned that I learned that lesson in that moment, in that line at coffee. Um, I didn't know it in the moment, but a couple hours later, when I realized who I was talking to, and that, like, frankly, people paid thousands of dollars for thirty minutes of Ben Kenny's time, and I got forty minutes and a coffee. So, yeah. like, like it just kind of set the tone. Um, it was it was actually really great that that happened early in my KW career because that solidified what what I have built as a culture in my, my real estate team, my, my, frankly, my world, my household, mm-hmm. everything is, uh, you know, we, we can all joke around about like the value propositions and the, and the, and the, 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 the Y4C2T as well. Well, I take that first one really serious. Like if it's not a win-win, we don't need to do it. And, and that's, and, and that's a, that's, that's a filter I can run just about every decision through. 
on any on any avenue. So, uh, so not to not to go all KW on you. I'm sure you have uh, uh, other other folks that listen, but uh, and and listen, all of us are broker agnostic. We just people people people. That's it. Mm-hmm. So. Um, anyway, so we joined KW, got some exposure to what some folks were doing around the country. Um, it was the first, it was actually the first time anybody that was not directly going to receive income off of me helped me, right? Yeah. Like, like I actually got embraced by folks that had zero to gain from helping me and, and they were open, they were open arms, open books. There, there was no secrets. Like, this is what we're doing. Uh, if you're in the Ben Kenny world, you've heard of R and D rip off and duplicate. Like that's, that was life, right? Like I would go to conferences. I would go fly to somebody's office in, in New Jersey and go hang out for a couple of days and mastermind. And I'd come home and I would just rip off and duplicate things that they were doing well. And, and that's how we, that's kind of how we catapulted. Now you got to think about the timing of this was in the business in 2010, really seeing success about 2000. 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20, right? Like those were the years. So don't get me wrong. The market helped me a lot, right? Like, like especially for folks listening to this right now in current times when the market across the country or across the world probably is around 30% down, uh, we had help from the market. So not, not everything was, I can't take credit for everything because a good market really does help. Mm-hmm. Um, but that being said, we always based our business in fundamentals. Always, always learning, always training, always coaching. Uh, I have a team now here in uh, Southwest Florida with another uh, satellite office in Central Florida, and we do the same things that we did before. We do the same things that everybody else does. We do our our, our role play. We do our trainings. We do our stand ups. Uh, we have accountability. It's really just getting into the fundamentals, getting back to the basics because. That's what works. Yeah. So you you haven't said this yet, but you built up a pretty significant operation, yeah. five hundred <clears throat> units a year. Yeah. How does one go? There are a million answers you give me to this, but what's the most yeah. important thing someone could do if they want to go from solo agent, husband wife team, to a, yeah. a team that transacts at that level? So so models and systems are key. Uh, I mean, if if anybody tells you otherwise, they probably got lucky. Because models and systems are really the way that you can scale anything. Now, I, I'd love to tell you that I had some great models and systems, and that's how I did it. It's not what happened. Uh, we just threw stuff at the wall, figured out what stuck, and and I I kind of I kind of always alluded to the fact that we were we were we were just a ship with holes in it, and we just kept patching holes until there were no many no more holes to fill. And what we realized was again the human element really made a difference. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to give a shout out to somebody here. Uh, uh, Jeff Cohn. I don't know if you know who Jeff Cohn no, is. He's been on the podcast. Huge okay. Fan. So Jeff, I listen Jeff to this Cohn, podcast all the time. I met, I met Jeff in his office um, from listening to his podcast. I went to one of his workshops and this was when we were sitting about three, I think we were like 350, 365. We had a couple years in the mid three hundreds of transactions. And it was day one of the conference, which wasn't even part of the conference. Literally, it was just show up to the office and have happy hour and get introductions. And tomorrow we were going to get into content. And, uh, and Jeff sees me across the room. He introduced himself. And in front of everybody, he asked us, so why are you here? And I said, you know, 350 seems to be my ceiling. I haven't found a way to beat that. And he, he kind of chuckled a little bit. And if you know Jeff, you, you can see it. He literally just kind of gave me this this somewhat of a confident chuckle and said, Oh, that's easy. You just need more agents. And I went, yeah, sure. That makes sense for you. You're in Omaha. Like I'm in Sebring, Florida. We, you know, we don't have a thousand agents, much less do we have a, you know, really highly productive agents. Mm -hmm. Uh, So, uh, so I, I had him dig in a little deeper than that. And what we identified was I was trying to clone me. I was only accepting people into my organization that thought like me, uh, wanted to work like me, were driven by the same things as me. And, and guess what? Not everybody's like that. And so I got really lucky identifying a few in the beginning to get me to the level of success that I was, 
but that was actually what was holding me back. And so uh, I remember that year, that, that was in March. That was in March of that year. And I went home and I started, I started recruiting. I started hiring. And um, my, my metric before was if you, can't, if you can't or don't want to produce 48 deals a year, there's probably not a place for you on my team. Because that was the culture. I thought that was the culture I wanted. Mm-hmm. And after that, after that session with Jeff, I, um, I realigned and I started interviewing people and just trying to help them get what they wanted, not what I wanted. Yeah. That, was when, that was when the magic happened. That was when everything got easier. That was when you know agents' production levels were, were literally just doubling. Like, like yeah. we were going from one or two a month to two or three to three or four. I mean, there were, there were plenty of times where I had, I had team agents and, and my team structure at that time was buyers, agents worked buyers and listing agents worked listings. And I would have agents with eight to 10 closings a month. So, so we figured out leverage, we figured out support staff, and we figured out that if we just help people get what they want, we get what we want. And I know that's cliched. And I think every podcast under the sun has had somebody say that on there, but I'm going to say it again because leaders are repeaters and that's the truth. You got to keep saying it. It's one of our core values within our team. Yeah. We get anything. We re- we are indeed it off some self-help guy. I forget who said it, but you can get anything you want in life. If you help others get what they want. That's and we, uh, yeah. we also repeat it it's, every it's single a, Monday. A- it's a factual statement. I will I will stand behind that one. Yeah. So I was interested. So when when we went to that conference, there were quite a few Libyan people that were up on stage. And yeah. you, the accountability systems I'm sure you had within your team that you carried over to Libyan, I think are second to none. Um, I, I remember speaking to someone from your group. I can't remember the name. And it sounds like if you walk down the office of Living Team, you'll get stopped. And I think the questions were, did you book something? Did you sign something today? Did you book something today? Did you, sign, uh, some, sign some. It's it's the S's. Yeah. You know, sign something, sell something, set an appointment. And I'll give him credit. His name is Matt Miali, and he's got a, a amazing team up in Connecticut. Mm-hmm. He's yeah. kind of like hardcore. Oh. He, a little bit military. Uh, yeah. You, you, you feel like he's yelling at you. But it all comes from a great place. But that's who Mm -hmm. he is, man. He's just a, he is an energy guy and he cares about people. And you know what? Accountability is real because you know what? The greatest form of care is accountability, right? If I don't care about you, I'll let you fail. But if I do, I'm not going to let you do it. Yeah. And since you mentioned Kathy, you're going to hear that from her a lot too, I promise. Mm. (laughs) Because... Because I think she uses the uh, confrontation. I think that's her quote. Confrontation is the greatest form of care. Yeah. So. Can you speak to some of the systems you had in place with yeah. your team around accountability? Well, so I think accountability is is somewhat of a four letter word to a lot of agents. Um, but what I found is in the beginning, uh, when you when you first start in the business. When you get a little bit of success, you don't you don't like people telling you what to do. You don't you you want to you want to kind of carve your own path. You want to blaze your own trail, kind of thing. And and I think that's a misstep. I think that's why I brought up models and systems earlier. Is because if we just if we just put our blinders on and do the things we know that work every single day, we're going to be fine. Um, and so the culture that I built within my organization of my my team prior to 2021, and now uh, that I'm helping facilitate with the other leaders within Libyan. Is, is, is a culture of, of, of care and a culture of it's okay if you don't succeed. It's not okay if you don't try. And so we just put, we just put little guardrails in everywhere. And, and you know, like, like I'm going to speak to Matt Miali. You know, he probably was on stage talking about the four agreements of Libyan. Four agreements are very simple. Uh, one, you got to show up. And that doesn't mean in body. That means body, spirit, engaging, ready to participate, ready to contribute, right? So if we're having a, a, a team meeting on Zoom at 8.30 on Monday after Thanksgiving holiday, you're expected to be there. But not only are you expected to be there, but you're expected to be there with your camera on, ready to go. And, and you know what? Sometimes, as nice as I can be, sometimes you got to tell people, hey, 
please turn your camera on. Let's participate. And sometimes we just ask people to just come back tomorrow because if you're not able to participate, I understand that. Uh, same thing when it comes to like leads. You know, everybody uh, leads are kind of a four letter word, but like, listen, they exist in the in the real estate economy, right? Everybody, everybody talks about them. Everybody acts like they don't want them or don't need them, but they're very important. Well, if I'm paying for leads, I need I need to make sure that the people I'm giving them to are not only trained well enough to convert them, but they have enough work ethic in them to actually do the job, especially in 2023 and moving into 24. Because guess what? We just talked about it. The market's down 30%. My expectation is we're probably going to lose another 15% nationally uh, in 2024. So I'm telling my team, we just had our business building uh, session. Uh, I believe we're in for about a 15% decline, which means you need to talk to 15% more people if you want the same exact result. And yeah. so and so we actually hold firm on that. Everybody on our Monday morning calls talks about their goals, talks about how many people they're going to have conversations with. Uh, we have deep dives into their pipeline. If my agents can't rattle off a story to a name, th that's not their client. They don't, that's not yours. That's somebody else's client because you don't know enough about them to really solve their problems. So when we do a pipeline report, I got the pipeline on my screen. They're on the other side of it. And I'm just saying, all right, what do you know about Mike? And it's their job to tell me the story and help me understand what their pain points are and what problem we're trying to solve. Because if we're not trying to solve a problem, we're wasting time. Love that. So, so while we work hard, we play hard too. So in, built into the community, built into the uh, accountability is reward. So I probably didn't tell you this, and it's probably not on the bio, but you know, for 10 years, we ran a team vacation, 10 years. And I never had an agent not qualify, never, in 10 years. And I'm talking, we went to Cuba, we went to Jamaica, we went to, like, like we went and played, and it was team, team agent plus spouse. And we did that for 10 years straight. Because one, if I can't go on vacation with you, I probably shouldn't work with you, right? Like if I can't hang out with you for a couple hours a day uh, on the beach somewhere, I'm probably not going to be able to hang out with you in the office for eight to 10 hours a day. Mm -hmm. So, so that was kind of another little, it's just another little thing uh, when we're hiring is, can we hang out with these people? Because a lot of people say that their team is like family. Ours actually is Yeah, it's still to this day. We do the same thing, and that's uh, last year we went to um, Dominican. Year before it was Mexico, and that's the question we I asked myself internally: Can I hang out with this person on the beach? It's probably yeah. going to be forced to hang out with them on the beach. Yeah, yeah. If I can't, if I can't muster through a week in paradise, I probably am not going to muster through working with them on a day to day basis. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. We're not for everybody, you know. I, I, we talk about that at Livian. You know, Livian is. We're, we're, we're creating the Navy SEALs of real estate. Like our, our, our goals are very clear. Uh, we want to be the highest per agent production team ever. Yeah. And that's it. That's the answer, which that's why guys like Matt Miali and I are here. <laughs> yeah. I think like obviously training is very important. Um, yes, but the accountability piece is huge. You, you could ask me right now, Mike, how many calls did you make today? I'll tell you, I made 50. And then you actually go check my system and 50 is 25. But in my head, I truly think it's good. Yeah. So if you can yeah. find a way to truly track numbers for people, well, it's not that they don't well, want to it, do the work, it's that the realtors suck at tracking. Well, that's, and that's why CRMs at this point are, are gold, right? Like, mm -hmm. like I remember you, people listening to this probably don't even know, like, top producer was my first CRM, which at the time was the gold. The gold level of CRMs, it didn't do anything compared to the CRMs of today. I mean, today, uh, you know, follow-up boss will tell me uh, how many calls I made, how many minutes I was on each one. They don't count a contact if the call doesn't take two minutes. Like, literally, like, like we can get the data. At this mm -hmm. point, the data isn't the issue. It's the effort. You know, yeah. I, when, when I'm coaching with some of the CEOs within Living, and it's like we're talking about, a, you know, agent engagement or agent productivity, the first question I ask, is it a will problem or a skill problem? Because we can solve one of those. Mm -hmm. The other one is on them because we can fix their skill set. If they're willing to put in the energy, time, and dedication to get better, they will. If they're not, 
They might not be a part of our team. And that's okay. We we love people right out the door all the time. Like, like yeah. this is not for everybody. And that's okay. Because I live in a world of abundance. Like, you know, when, when I hear people, uh, you know, I, I hear, you know, statistics of, you know, we're going to, real estate's going to sell, you know, a million and a half less homes this year. Well, I look at that and go, well, there's 4 million left. I don't need all of them. Mm -hmm. I, I'll take my unfair share and still have plenty for everybody else. So it's yeah. just, it's just a matter of changing your mindset and, and being willing to do the work. I don't Next know if I answered question your question you. about the accountability though. Did, did you did you get enough there? I think so. Yeah. Okay. Um, somewhat running out of time here. Next question I have for you and this personal one. So our, our group right now, probably do 130 ends this year. We've done more in the past. Um, obviously I want more in the future for myself and the team, but the primary reason I want it for myself is not for the money necessarily mm -hmm. it's to get in rooms with certain people like yeah. I, I coach with kathy now that's a room i cherish um i want more of that it's something i visualize in my morning routine it's pretty hardcore yeah i look at myself in my mind like say ed my lat as a buddy or glover is not just a coach it's part of Kathy's world. He's actually my friend in the future, hanging out with him and truly yeah. learning from him. Guys like Adam too. So you, you've you done that. Okay? Mm -hmm. I heard you say something. You anticipate the market's going to go down 15% next year. I heard verbatim the exact same thing out of Kathy's mouth. I assume <laughs> that's coming from like Gary or someone. You guys are well, all saying the same thing. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're all connected to some degree, right? Like, like, like everybody talks. I, I, I actually work. I talked, I, uh, I hired Kathy. So Kathy's actually my okay. coach at this point too. No, I, um, I didn't know that. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Cause, cause that's one thing that I, that's one thing that, that I like to tell everybody is, you know, coaching is for everybody because we all need that accountability piece and we all need that sounding board to bounce ideas off of whether you're closing a hundred units, 300 units, a thousand units, or maybe, maybe, you know, I hired Kathy to help me coach other people. Right. Like mm -hmm. that, that was really in, in like organically, she's helping me with my current team as well. Like she can't help yeah. it. Um, but that's kind of the idea is we, we always have to be thirsty for knowledge. We always have to be looking for, for ways to improve ourselves. I mean, why do we track numbers? Like why, why track them? If you're not going to look at them, it doesn't matter. We track numbers so we can know where we need to improve. And, and guess what? It's an infinite game. You're never going to be perfect but you can always improve. And so mm -hmm. for me, that's, that's kind of uh that's kind of just the idea every single day is how do we, how do we just get better today and, and, yeah. and get really strategic around where the, uh, where the areas we need to improve are and hyper-focusing in to, to improve that for a season, because guess what? We can't improve our conversion rates, uh, 365 days a year, uh, but we can for a season and then we can move on and, and, and try to improve something else. Like maybe we need to work on um, appointment setting, or maybe we need to work on presentations. Like there's just so many different things and so many different categories that that's kind of the only reason I'm still in real estate. Like mm -hmm. I told you earlier, I'm an entrepreneur. Like I, I normally it's five years and I'm out, I'm looking for something else. Um, I'm a serial entrepreneur. Like when things get easy, I make them hard kind of thing. And real estate's one of those industries where I've never felt like we've really figured it out to the degree that I should move on. Mm -hmm. And I don't think we ever will. Yeah. There's, there's lots I don't of factors. Think you ever need to in this like when you no. read when you speak to people at the top, um like an Adam or Chris Suarez, I've never spoken to Gary Keller, but I assume he's similar. It's all, they've grown so much. It's almost like you're speaking to an alien. Yeah. Like when I speak to Adam, <laughs> the things coming out of his mouth, I've never uh, thought. Adam, Adam, Adam's a them. great example, right? Cause Adam has, Adam has really embraced separating business from spiritual and, and just being okay with the outcome of everything. Right. Like, mm -hmm. like, we can control what we can control. We can't what we can't. And it's our job to, it's okay to be upset. It's okay to be angry. It's okay to be frustrated. 
just let it be and then move on from it because there's there's nothing good can from, come from dwelling on things we can't control. And yeah. uh, if any if anything, that's that's probably the most impactful thing I've learned from Adam over the last you know couple of years. Yeah, he's very uh, he's almost like a stoic. Um, yeah, for sure. Like climbing mountains and focusing yeah. only what on, on what he could control and eliminating everything else. He that's said it. something that impacted me. It wasn't when he was on the podcast. I heard him say this a long time ago. And I think if people choose to view their business this way, they will make it so much more enjoyable. And you'll probably go a lot further. He said any business, but specifically real estate business, it's purely a tool for your own personal development. And then yeah. the second, when I heard that, <clears throat> that is so powerful. And now every yeah. day I... I have it written down in my journal. The only reason yeah. you show up is to learn. And if you approach yeah, well, it that way, you end up making way more money and you bring up more agency. Yeah. And if you can, if, again, right. Like if you, if you combine that with the idea of all we're trying to do is help people get what they want, like that's the secret sauce. That's the magic. Mm -hmm. Now, is it easy? Heck no, yeah. not easy. Can be, can be hard. Doesn't really matter. Right. Choose your hard. You're going to have hard in your life regardless. Why not have your heart be something that majorly impacts yourself and others in your world that you care about? So I, I agree. Like, you know, my wife and I, when we sold our business, we had no intentions of starting another real estate team. I had no intentions of, of working at, uh, working coaching living in teams. And like, that wasn't in the cards. I literally thought I was done. I was, I was burnt out. I was like, I knew at that point we were at a breaking point in our, in our relationship with my wife. Like, you know, owning a business together, it's hard. Mm -hmm. And, and I, and it wasn't worth it at the time. So we sold the business and we were literally just going to ride off in the sunset and live off our investments and be real estate investors. Um, and, you know, I was speaking at a couple events around the country. So that was like, that was why we were traveling around and it was great for about six months. Yeah. And it was like, all right, this isn't it. I'm not old enough to not have purpose. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so my conversation, Adam actually met me, uh, two months after I had sold my business, uh, and, and he was recruiting me to Libyan and I, and I met with him. I went and had uh, about a two hour lunch and we had a great conversation and I was like, well, it's been really fun, but I don't have a team to partner with you. So it's nice knowing you. I appreciate everything. And I went on my way and, uh, eight months later, uh, we had been talking via zoom for like twice a month and he offered me this, this position. And uh, that's when that's when uh, you know traveling around and not having purpose got really old, yeah. and so this seemed like a big enough challenge and in a in a in a in a job that I could do from pretty much anywhere. So I was like, "Yeah, I'm in. Let's do it." And then uh, that was August of 22, and then uh, I took my wife to an event later that month. And she was feeling the exact same things that I was feeling, although we had never talked about it. We'd never talked about she didn't have purpose. And she was, she felt like her entire identity was wrapped up in being a businesswoman and a real estate agent and highly successful. And she just wasn't happy. And it wasn't until we went to that real estate conference and she's like, I got to go back in to do this. And at that point, even our intention was is I was going to coach for Livian and she was going to be a single agent. And uh, as, as it sits today, <laughs> Excuse me, pardon me. As it sits today, uh, we have a team of uh, twelve agents. So <laughs> fantastic you know, that that we started in January of this year. So it's yeah. just it's just crazy. How Are you guys powered out. by Livian, or it's totally separate? Yeah, yeah, we're we're tied in with Livian, and uh, yeah. we operate out of uh, Fort Myers, Florida. Okay, and then we have a satellite office in Sebring, Florida, where we had our previous team. Amazing, good for you guys. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, any um. I, I don't want to take up the rest of your day. Um, you got nice. a lot today. Anything you want to add before we hop off? Um, to be honest, uh, if I was just to give a message to agents in the world today, right? If I could go back and change one thing about how I approach this business, I would tell them to slow down. Don't try to, don't try to, take over the world in your first couple of years. 
after your first 24 months in this business, the learning curve is over. And that's when you get that hockey stick growth. And so I, what I what I felt like I did, whether it was wrong, right, indifferent, doesn't matter. If I could go back and do it again, I would have probably taken a little less time at work and spent a little more time at home because I believe I would have gotten a better result in the end. I believe that the burnout was caused from just my – my consistent passion to be the best. And that's, that's a gift and a curse, right? It's, it's, you know, you, you see, you see guys on TV that win the Super Bowl and they don't really look happy because they weren't really happy to win the Super Bowl. It was the path to get there. That was what really made the difference in their world. And that's, that's kind of how I feel about my real estate career is I love where I'm sitting. Don't get me wrong. I, I feel like I was very fortunate things, uh, the ball bounced my direction multiple times. I got multiple chances to, to correct problems um, and identify weaknesses and get strengths. And, and, and what I wish I would have done is I wish I would have been a little more in the moment in my personal life. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's my advice because I imagine people that are listening to this podcast are hungry. And so if you're hungry, sometimes you're willing to neglect personal things to go out there and achieve. And I think that's kind of the same message that Adam brings now is it's okay. It's going to be there tomorrow. We can, we can fight this fight another day. Maybe we don't even have to fight it. Mm -hmm. It's going to be okay. Because I truly believe that if you wake up every day with intentionality and desire, you will get what you want, regardless of uh, whatever's happening in the moment. Amazing advice. Yeah. It's so, advice I need to take personally. <laughs> <laughs> some, some, me too. Don't worry. <laughs> you know what makes I have uh, the Google reminders that show up on my phone pretty yeah. much every day. And it show I have two kids and it will show them two years ago or a year ago. Yeah. It makes you think how fast time goes. Yep. And that's they will the be stuff gone. you don't get back. That's the stuff mm -hmm. you don't get back, right? Yeah. Yeah. Funny story. I, uh, I recently got locked out of my Facebook account. I have no idea how. I don't even know what's going on. But what I realized is um, I don't have any pictures. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this digital world has, has confined everything that I have. Uh, you know, I didn't mention this, but I also, uh, in the midst of all this, my wife and I, we had moved to... Cape Coral, Florida, Fort Myers, Florida in July of 2022, uh, just before taking the position with Livian. And there was that storm that came through Florida uh, in late September. And so we lost everything we had. You know, we lost our house. We lost all the contents. We lost everything. And so what you realize is um, things don't really matter. Stuff doesn't mm -hmm. matter. And so... Yeah. so whether it's my lens, because I'm sitting here on the, on the flip side of that, that you know last 18 months or however long it's been um i really do value the people in my world the the it's it's less about things and less about accumulating status and more about just spending the time with the people you care about because at the end of the day i still haven't figured out how to make more time and i don't see it on the forefront i know there's some billionaires out there trying to figure it out. But, uh, for me, it's like, let's just enjoy what we have when we have it. And as long as we wake up and, and honor our schedules and honor our family and honor our desires, we still will get whatever we want. I love it. Thank you so much for your time. Today. Yeah, man. Yeah. Awesome. I, I appreciate it. Sorry, you, uh, sorry about the reschedule. <laughs> no, no, it's all good. I didn't even know what happened. This, these oh. show up in my calendar, <laughs> but, Perfect. uh, I'll see you in Fort Lauderdale, May, I guess. Yep, and I'll then, be there. You going to family reunion? Oh, for sure. I'm going. Nice. I'm going a little early since uh, you know it's in Vegas. <laughs> yeah, love it. Maybe we'll see you there. All right, brother. Stay in touch. Cool, man. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Bye. -bye. Yeah. Every day I'm hustling. Every day I'm hustling. Every day I'm hustling. Every day I'm.